Loveline is meant for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew. I'm not modeling anymore for the two of you. Loveline. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. Old school Loveline. Is that our old beginning? Nice. Yeah. Just for a change? That's yeah. our old beginning? Old, old, though, right? How old? Super old? Four years. Four five. years? Wow. All right. Good times, Good times everybody. <laughs> it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Drew got himself a new car. Oh, so I, happy. I, you're happy. I'm happy. Why? Because. You've you've been chewing on my ear about getting a new car for uh, about six months before I met you. <laughs> so it's been nine years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always yeah. threatening to get something. Always wanting something sporty, something yeah. nice. Drew finally broke down. Got the M5. Mm. Got the car of his dreams. Mm. Feels good, doesn't it? Mm. Nothing wrong with that, Drew. I was crying. Were you? It's uh, yeah. It was, it was it was a visceral experience for you. Yes. I told Drew this was his therapy. This, this, I know I'm done with therapy. When when <laughs> you can actually go get the car, stop talking about what your kids need, what your wife needs, who's going to sign off on this, what the responsible thing to do is. Just you bust your ass. You work five jobs. You're uh, old enough now. Give yourself a little present for all the years of hard work, all the schooling, all the sucking up of the, uh, of the man. All the licking of the index finger and uh, rubbing the nipple. Of the man? Oh, no, of your, your own. Oh, oh, your own. While yeah. you masturbate and cry. Oh, all oh, the years. Yeah, yeah. All the years of that. Yeah. Now, With now thousands payback of times time. I've had to do that, yes. Payback time. Oh, yes. Nothing wrong with that, Drew. It's unreal. Feel good, don't oh. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drew's, uh, Drew's really, a, he's, he's the only car guy I know who doesn't actually have a car. <laughs> Uh, he was uh, no bigger car enthusiast than Dr. Drew, except for he uh, never had a car for the uh, eight years I knew him. He, he leased station wagons, <laughs> but spoke spoke freely of the automobile, in theory. Now he's living the dream. Mm. Caroline? Yeah. You're 18? Yes. What's up? Okay. Um, I haven't had a relationship for six months, and I just got in one. We've been together for four days, and we are already fighting mm -hmm. because I smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And this is like a huge deal to him or whatever. So he gave me this ultimatum that if I didn't quit, he was going to break up with me. What is it that's a huge deal for him? He doesn't like the smell or the taste or doesn't like well, you hurting okay. yourself? No, here's the funny part. I told him that I would not smoke an hour before I saw him or around him at all. But just the fact that I smoke is so apparently repulsive to him that he'd break up with me for Do you want to be in a guy that, with a guy that that's, is so controlling and so uh, uptight? Uh, not that you should be smoking cigarettes. I know. I mean, it's disgusting, yeah, right? Yeah, right. But, like, but let's talk about this guy and him setting these kinds of crazy boundaries down. Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, I've only known him for four days. Uh, I, I, if, oh, hold on. Yeah. Here's the thing. You're supposed to be very pliable at the beginning of the relationship. Your best you're behavior. Guy, best behavior. Especially if you think you're going to, if, if this means sex is on the oh, way. No, no, I'm a virgin. I'm just saying, as the guy, he thinks some sex may be around the corner. Ooh. Well, I told him it wasn't. Oh, well, that's why he's now he's laying his law down now. Right. Oh, by the way, I like a, a chain smoking virgin. <laughs> I'm not a chain smoker. You don't see too many of them. Like she's but, like she's on the parking lot blowing a bud, <laughs> lighting one off the next. You know, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still got my hymen. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> probably go from lung cancer or emphysema before the hymen gets popped. <clears throat> Who's got another butt? <clears throat> Jenny. Oh, wait a minute, one. that's not Jenny. Caroline. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was wondering, okay, I said I'd quit. And so I was wondering, do you think he'll be, like, more controlling and give me, like, other ultimatums now? Because, like, because, I mean, we were in a fight for a really long time. Yeah, this like, is, is he, is he it, listen, day I, I, four, I just yeah. read ultra fastidious perfectionistic guy. Is that Wait? who he is? Is he sort of a super perfectionistic, ultra compulsive, clean kind of guy, that kind of thing? No. No. What is his, describe him to us. Well, okay, he wants to be a mechanic, and he wants to be a bodybuilder, and, uh... <laughs> Is he, he doing steroids? He himself on being an asshole. Yeah, yeah. He's, He's doing steroids. He prides... Well, not him. at this exact moment. But he does steroids, but you to. can't do... You, he he won't let you do he cigarettes. He prides himself yeah. on being an asshole? It was kind of like you, Adam, yeah. I'm, oh, he's, okay. He doesn't pride Adam, him. I love you. <laughs> I'm not proud. It just he comes just, out. He just can't hide it. He would if he could. <laughs> you know, my wife yelled at me tonight. Oh, oh yes. Gosh. Tell me. She yelled. She yelled. 
I'm not one of your callers. <laughs> I thought, uh, great. Where, where are we? i got to mark this on the calendar. <laughs> Eight and a half months into the marriage? Yep. Yeah. I fa- I, the over-under was four and a half, so that's pretty good. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, See, I normally wouldn't care so much, but I care a lot about this guy. No, and- you don't. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. okay. Whoa, but she smokes pot. Okay, but... Like, she smokes pot, too. This guy's a bodybuilder mechanic who prides himself <laughs> on being an a-hole who uh, gets on uh, the juice but doesn't want her smoking the butts. He, he's... It's, it's he's four days into trouble. it. They're yeah. still arguing. He, he definitely is the guy who assumes he's not going to be a virgin long. That's his assumption. It, it, day number four, they should be able to take a uh, wrist rocket, fill it with uh, one of the uh, with a uh, hollowed-out walnut shell, and then uh, put compressed fecal matter in it and uh, shoot it at your head while you're asleep, and you should have... No, no problem. problem. You no should problem. be like, hey, Honey, hey that's, that's so smarted cute. a little. That's so cute. It's so cute. Yeah, that's where you should be, not having wars. So it's over. Jenny? Yep. You're 20. Yes. What's up? Okay, so um, I recently bought a vibrator mm-hmm. and can't have an orgasm unless it's with that. Had you ever had one before the vibrator? Two. Two. I've had a boyfriend for the last two years, and he goes to school in New York. Um, he came home for, like, the last month, and it's just, like, not even the same at all. You didn't answer my question. Were you able to have orgasms before you developed the relationship with the vibrator? Yes. I, well, I had, I've, I've had two. and I, I mean, two, two in your life? Yes. And now you have them freely with the vibrator? Yeah, great. Okay, well, you needed the vibrator. There you go. You think? Yes. And the boyfriend is like... Needs to just fall in line behind the vibrator. That's right. Take a number. Okay. No, he, he needs to... To he, use. He, he needs to use, use the to. vibrator... He's like... In concert with his... Uh, what? He's like pissed about it. He's he's intimidated. He's I mean, intimidated. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We well, should be. Like, he didn't want me to get it to begin with. And then I bought it, and like now he's... Mm. Yeah, okay. And this sounds like another great relationship. Yeah. Can he use the vibrator in concert with his penis when uh, you guys are making love? Um, He could, but he's like, I mean, I don't, he's kind of weird about it. He doesn't well, like that's it. That's his problem. Okay. That's too bad. Like, he's not, I don't know. That's too bad. Okay. Really, that's too bad. You, you found a way to, to do this, and it's great. What's going on with these guys he out should, there? He should, uh, geez, he should be pleased. It's right. the best day of your life. Let me yeah. tell you something what that vibrator's like when the old lady announces she's getting a well, vibrator. Well, it's like it's like the advent of the motorized the, the motorized lawnmower. You know, you're not pushing the little, right? Yeah. Now, now there's got a motor on it. Yeah, is that what I was going to say? It, really? No, you oh. idiot. <laughs> no, I, I had something to say, too. What were you, you going to say? You did. All right, all right. Nah, it's not my... It was reminiscent of that. It was marginally funnier, but now I'm not going to say it. All right. God damn it. Here's what I'm saying, Drew. Yeah. When the old lady says she wants to get a vibrator, yeah, it's like your boss saying, like you work at a shipping shipping warehouse, and your boss right. saying, you know what? I'm going to buy a forklift. Right. Great. Right. You ain't going to get fired. You, climb, you need someone to drive that forklift. right in. And all of a sudden, your back is saved. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No problem lawnmower. Well, I just imagine how hard it was push. Remember, did you have to push one of those things? You guys never mowed your lawn, did you? <laughs> we had a lawn. Our, my, my house I grew up in was uh, like uh, from the uh, Monsters. It, and the lawn was about uh, about three feet three feet high most of the time. We just looked you, guys, at, you, you took machetes out and just did your Well, lawn. my mom wouldn't water. You, you know, indigenous. You know what I mean? Brush. Brush. Well, pay... So you'd have a fire every five years in your front lawn, and that would cut it down. God willing. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah, if you lived in the valley and it was 100, 100 degrees every day, and you just well. never watered your lawn, just close your eyes. There you go. Oh. One more humiliation to endure. Justin? Yes, sir. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Um, Every relationship. I want to say this, though, Drew. One good thing about growing up in a dump, no chores. There's no like, uh, you gotta, you know, I set the table, so you gotta, you you gotta clean the dishes, or who's gonna mow the lawn, who's gonna, you didn't make your bed, eh, none of that. Yeah, they just no, it's got to say it's one good thing. Go. Yeah, it's one good thing. 
Like if you're like one of the Manson fans, if you grow up like one of the Manson, that's it. You don't have to do anything. No lawn to mow. Nothing like that. Justin? Yeah. No prayers. No homework. You're 18. What's up? Oh, every relationship I get into, I manage to mess it up with my insecurities. Did he say the S word? Mess or- it up. Mess it up. No, no. He said everyone's... Sh- relationship. Oh, I just heard the ship part. And hear the relation part. Okay, yeah. you, you mess up everyone's relationship. No, mine. Like, I get a girlfriend, and then, like, I try to, you know, like, make everything work. Not, like, make it or force it. I try to, you know, I guess, try to make them understand where I'm coming from, you know, try to nurture their needs or whatever. And then the everything. hell are you talking about? What, what do you is mean? That, what is the translation of nurture their needs? Well, like, you know... <laughs> Like, if they're insecure about something, I try to understand, you know, and try to make them feel better about it. I, Are these I, your girlfriends? Yeah. Dying to know what their version of it would be. Do you have a girlfriend right now? No. I manage to... <laughs> I always manage to drive them away. Are you a virgin? No. So you're crawling up under their skin, right? Are you okay? Are you all right? You feel okay? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that how you are with them? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm totally comfortable around women. No, 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 no. no. Listen, mm. here's the thing. Hold on, I think I'm going to sneeze. Chirp. And yeah, went away. Okay, here's the thing. Uh, when you're an 18-year-old guy, you ask too many questions, you snoop too much. Right. Now, now, here's the deal. You can always paint it. You can call us up and paint it as if you're just concerned, you're Nurturing, considerate. Yes. Isn't that what they want after right. all? But what women hate is probing. You know what women want? They want you to listen, and but lead. they don't want you to probe. Right. Yes, they want you to lead when it's time to lead. And then they want you to listen when it's time to listen. But they don't like the probing. They hate the probing. Yeah. Penny, for your thoughts, how you doing? You, you okay? okay? What are you thinking? What's going on? Are you okay? What do you think about me? Did I do something wrong? You know what women can't stand? Women can't stand the, did I do something wrong? Mm-hmm. It sounds sensitive enough. It sounds like just the kind of crap they would go for, but they don't like it. It's sort of, uh, I don't know, they're sort of like kids. You know, like, I don't know if you ever got into this with your kids, where you end up sort of kissing their butt a little bit. Like, uh, I'm sorry, did I, is something, that, did daddy, was daddy bad or something? They're just going to, that, that you just bought out. another hour of pout. Yeah. And some more weirdness. Yeah. And a weird power that they've seized that they didn't really want. Right. Freaks them out. They don't want to be parentalized. <clears throat> Pets, kids, and women, everybody. Yeah. I got to write a book. Mm-hmm. Justin needs to... Uh, he needs to mold his uh, social skills after uh, <clears throat> Luke Perry mm-hmm. from 90210. The character. Just a little bit. Uh, Some guy uh, named brood, Dylan on brood Fox. Just bit. brood a little bit. Look down a lot. Look down. Wear dark clothes. Do that thing where you put your hands in your pocket like James Dean would do, and then you just look down. Just constantly looking down. And you know what? Lean on stuff when mm-hmm. you're talking. Don't ever talk just standing or sitting. Find something to lean against. And never hold your head up. Don't hold your head up. Yeah, just keep it down. Put your foot out, put your hands in your pocket, and lean back, and then put your chin up against your chest while you're talking. And have no answers. What's wrong? I don't know. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Can you tell me? I just need my space right now. Why? I would understand. Nobody understands. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, that's it. They eat that. that they'll be performing oral on you before uh, your last uh, No One Understands comes out. Okay. Corey? Yes. You're 23? Yes, I am. What's up? Oh, um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, okay, I haven't done ecstasy in four years. It, it, it has been almost four years exactly. But how, how many times did you, did you do it? Over a period of 10 months. I could say I easily did over 100 pills. Well, before you tell me what happened to you, let me tell you what typically occurs is you start to not want to go out so much anymore, and then you start to isolate, and you get panic attacks and get agoraphobic and then get depressed, and the Mm -hmm. depressions are profound. And they are because of a damage to the limbic area of the brain, and they tend to be lifelong. Okay, well, I, I am on Paxil right now. You know, it doesn't. Paxil may not do the trick for this one. It, it has helped with the anxiety a little bit. Yeah. My my therapist doesn't really know much about the effects it, of ecstasy. It it, it, it is profound. It, it it won't it won't affect much else but the mood, the panic, and sometimes some short term memory problems. Yeah. And okay. uh, and it's an injury. It's a you know. It's does, a, does it affect the 
And then because there's no brain tissue there, you have to use more powerful antidepressants. And some people, sometimes even things like shock therapy. But uh, I have noticed things like Effexor tend to be useful and Serazone. The Effexor didn't work. How about Serazone? Have you ever tried that? I haven't ever tried okay. Serazone. How many times did she do X? A hundred times. Uh, easily a hundred, possibly more yeah. than that. Wow. And I, I was going through a difficult time in my life. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't realize it then because I was... Party. Yeah. <laughs> so you just did it basically a couple times a week for... I went to a lot of raves. Really? It, this is, you know, and the reason a lot of young people don't know it's uh, as damaging as it is, is the, the stuff that Corey is experiencing doesn't come on sometimes for years. Then all of a sudden, pow. Uh, but I would imagine on. it's uh, time to start seeing a lot of that. Yeah, right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been long enough. People have been getting into X for a while. I did, I've done a cool public service announcement where I have a card with a brain. Airplane turbulence? No, no, no. I'm punching holes in a brain. These lights come beaming through the brain wherever I punch a hole. And it's about where the injury is and how it's damaged. What kind of brain? It's just a card with a picture of a brain on it. I'm punching with a paper puncher. Punching really? It. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool PSA. Where's that going to air? Mm, all over the state. It's, it's the state of California's anti-drug thing. <laughs> I do one where I'm peeing in a sink. And, and, the, and the purpose is? Water the conservation. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's a drought. It's drought in many parts of the country. It's dry out here. You know, you're, you're flush. It's like a 1.6 gallons, uh, right? Literally down the toilet. Your mom had bricks in the toilet, didn't she? Oh, My mom had a uh, 62 Nova in the toilet. Are you <laughs> kidding me? My mom had a... Uh, <coughs> my mom had a... Uh, a no... <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to kill myself <laughs> if you take me back there. <laughs> My mom had these uh, r retarded, you know, <clears throat> when I was growing up, believe it or not, post-its had not been invented. Post-its are about seven years old. <laughs> I, I don't know what took so goddamn long to put something sticky on the back of a piece of paper, yeah. but uh, post-its, too crazy an invention for the 70s and 80s. So my mom would just take these little pieces of, you know, note paper, you know, uh, three by five paper, write on it, and then, you know, scotch tape it to everything you know so there was and they'd start getting worn out and look kind of look kind of funky everything looked kind of temporary but uh there's a sign on the toilet that said uh, flush with a friend yeah nice to have urine floating in there for some time number twos i believe uh i went outdoors but i believe for, for other family members. i believe they flush the number twos but the uh, number one you flush with a friend that's so intrusive yeah <laughs> It's well, like you can't even have an excretion without your mom. Like that was okay. Weird stuff there was like one that. bathroom. It was uh, eight oh, square feet. It was beautiful. Uh, yeah, there was a big drought. Like in I don't know the late seventies, mid seventies. There was a big drought. Supposedly. Oh, whatever. Whether they'd give you tickets if you watered your lawn too long or something yeah. like that. But uh, like I said, the Corollas didn't have to worry about that. We didn't have a putting green out front. Grace. Yes. You're 22? Yes. What's up? Uh, you still there? Yeah. That Her line's work. too bad. We yeah. got to talk to somebody else. Melanie? Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, no, I'm 18. Um, sorry, that was my brother. All right. I'm attracted to older men. Mm-hmm. How old? Uh, like... Hold on. Why, why is she talking about being attracted to older men in front of her brother? No... <laughs> Yeah, and and she's not eighteen. Yes, Bogus. Seriously, I'm seriously eighteen. I, I was born May third, nineteen eighty five. How old are the, the guys you're attracted to? Like twenty nine and above. Yeah. How old's your brother? Twenty two. And y you're just uh, speaking freely in front of him. I just left the room. All I'm right. In my kitchen. All right, but he's listening on the radio, right? Yeah. All right. But he's hella close to me. He knows. All right, he's hella close. Okay. Hello, close. Hello, close. So, so uh, you're into older guys. Where's your dad? He is at his house right now. My mom and dad are divorced. How mm -hmm. old were you when he left? Like one. One. And was uh, it? I'm not actually. They just got divorced um, mutually. I'm not sure. Yeah, what, what kind of relationship you had with him? I have a great relationship with him. You do? Hmm. Yeah, I'm very close to him. Are you? Do you have a boyfriend now? Uh, not right now. You hella far from your boyfriend? <laughs> No, I don't have a boyfriend right now. No boyfriend? No. How old was your last boyfriend? Um, I'm the same age as me when I was 17. So what's the deal? Have you had a relationship with an older guy? No, not yet. No, you're just attracted you're to just attracted guy. Yeah. Right, every 18-year-old right. chick likes older guys. Just, it's what, the guy, ones that 
do it that, that get with older guys that we worry about. Yeah, you're fine. All right. You're hella fine. <laughs> Thanks. All right. That hella thing kind of came and went, didn't it? Yeah, I thought. I was hoping. Well, she's calling from Stockton. Yeah. It's uh, it's 1999 in Stockton. Yeah. Watch. They, they've not... Uh, watch it. Melanie. What? You got plans for the big uh, Millennium Celebration coming up? <laughs> it already happened there, Adam. Sorry. Okay. But hey, it happened here, but did it happen there yet? Yes, it did. Right. I want to warn you, too, uh, that uh, in September, early mid-September... Around the 11th? Yeah. Pretty tragic ass is going to go down, all right? Really? Yeah, don't yeah. be shocked. You know what? It's coming up. You know where I'm moving to? Where's that? L.A. All right. Yeah. Well, no. I'm, going, I'm going to uh, Cal State Northridge in the fall. Well, that's, that school's uh, hella bad. <laughs> How do you say that? I yeah. heard you talking about that like a couple months ago about that, and you were yeah. saying like it's a hella bad school and stuff. It, 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 of, it's kind of hella bad. There's a lot of old people there, though. But a lot of old students. A lot of old students there that are hella dumb. Why do you say that? Like, why? Why is it that? Ah, uh, it's all right. It's not that. It's just you know, it's the school people go to if they can't get into, uh, you know, UCLA. Well, no. That's all right, baby. Oh, God. <clears throat> I can't get into UCLA. I don't have the grades to. That's that's and the I point. Need, I need that, to get away. Didn't so. he just say that? Right. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. One of the one of the uh, hallmarks of stupid people. They make your point loud and clear when they're arguing with you. Yes. No, you don't understand. What do you mean it's a bad school? I couldn't get into UCLA. My grades were hella bad. Although I do think they have a hella pad there. Yeah, I thought she was talking about an aircraft. When she was... <clears throat> Let's take a little break. What do you say, Drew? Yeah. Let's make this one about four minutes. All right. We'll be back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right, buddy boy, you ready to go back to the phone? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. Talk to Heather, who's 23. Heather? Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's up? Well, um, this is kind of strange for me, anyways. Um, <laughs> my boyfriend and I, um, when we're having sex, sometimes when I am unable to orgasm, he. We. Um, you <laughs> uses his finger anally um, on me. When, you're, when you're unable to orgasm. When I'm unable, yes. And that helps you do that? No, it's yes. just punishment. Yeah. How dare you? You want the finger, yeah, bitch? Punishment. Cough it up. <laughs> All right. Is her connection bad? Yeah, but keep going. Is it? Well, let me move a little bit. You're lucky you have a finger anus question. Otherwise, we'd be so out of here. <laughs> well, I very much appreciate that. Um, so my question is, um, I, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that I would probably enjoy anal sex. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I, I, we've, we've attempted this, and it's too painful. Okay, mm-hmm. well, there you go. So I'm looking for some advice. Well, shrink his penis or enlarge your rectum. Shrink his penis, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, is there a way to kind of work yourself up to it? Uh, using plenty of lubrication? Yeah. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, well, there's no... Uh, we don't know. I mean, we, we had, what's her name, uh, Termino? Tristan Termino was sort of an expert in this stuff, and she's had all kinds of... I suppose you could get a device that was somewhere in between his finger and his penis, size-wise, and start getting yourself used to something that was in between so it wasn't such a large step up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that does seem like the logical explanation, doesn't it? <laughs> but well, if it hurts, it's, it's not well, likely going to feel good. You know, with a small step down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. Why? You don't it? enjoy it. Yeah. You like the little extra simulation. That's fine. And then uh, you don't want the penis, Drew. I'm going to take those keys and we'll throw them out the window. Okay. What are you doing? All, All right. right. I'll just finish it. All right. Drew, right. going nuts with the keys. All right. So Heather. Yes. Try something in between his finger and his penis. Perhaps my penis. <laughs> I'm guessing that's right in between. Maybe a little closer to the finger. <laughs> Um, what, are we, what are we supposed to tell her? I don't, I don't know. Relax. Pe- people, uh, people sometimes call that ask questions that don't really have answers, and then are sort of um, rhythmically disappointed. Yeah, like, it but, we, but, weirdly but, but, rhythmic. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like that's what you want to know what doing a show with Doctor Bruce is like. That's what the whole <laughs> goddamn show is like. <laughs> I will avoid this behavior in the future. <laughs> Handball against the curtains. Nice. It's, it's it's that same thing. It's like. 
Well, why don't you try something in between a, uh, the finger and the penis? Well, I... Oh, there's some people who, what they do, it's weird, is most people do a thing like, um, you know what it's like, Drew? Back in the day when they had uh, propellers on the fighter planes, they used to have a, have a little gear. Right? No. Drew, you ever write when you do that? No. Okay. Back in the day when they had propeller fighter planes, they'd have uh, machine guns behind them. Mm -hmm. And they had to figure out a way not to shoot the prop off the plane. Right. They had a little cam timing system that most people have. Mm -hmm. When you have conversation, it's like one's the bullet, one's the prop. It's right. it, You don't even know it. It's passing through. Right. It's, right. You say this, I say that, I can tell where you're going. Certain people don't have that. They, they, just, the they saw the prop yeah. off every yeah. time. That's yeah. what Dr. Bruce does. Mm -hmm. You know, sex is not a recreational sport. It's a weird thing. It's like, it's almost, it's it's like they're 180 degrees off. Mm. They, they wouldn't, you know, you couldn't be off that much just coincidentally. Right. You know what I mean? It, it's dialed in the wrong way. Oh. You're on You're on metric. They're on standard. Ah. Doesn't work. Mm. Hmm. He's good people. Don't get me wrong. Some people are that way conversationally. Mm -hmm. Then your rhythm, then your rhythm gets all screwed up. You're like... Uh, 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 yeah, uh, I, you know, I, I experience that when I, when I find myself stepping on people. They don't seem to finish what they're saying before I'm starting up what I need to say. Mm -hmm. No matter what. Yeah. I wait for them to finish. Yeah, it's they don't weird, finish. It's a they weird rhythm respond. thing. Tanya, hi. Um, before I ask my question, I just want to say, Doctor Drew, yesterday I was watching um, the news. I forgot what network it was on, but I saw the PSA. Oh, good. And it was awesome. I just have to say, like, I hope it gets around to more people because I've never done ecstasy for that reason because I've been listening to your show forever. Wow, wow. It's, it's great. Like, I, I'm very impressed by it. Oh, thanks. Okay, so my question is, I've been smoking pot for like two years, pretty much like a quarter um, ounce. True, you got to do a PSA ounce. on that, buddy. <laughs> I know, that was bad. But <laughs> I feel bad, but like I quit five months ago. And Hold on, we got to do a reenactment here. <laughs> I'll be the young caller. All right. Yeah. Bring. Hello, Tanya, what's up? Oh, first I want to say, Dr. Drew... I was watching TV uh, on the news the other night. I don't remember what channel it was, but I saw your PSA, the one with the brain and the ecstasy, and I want you to know that I thought it was really good, and I wish more people would see it, and I have not done ecstasy for those reasons. I'm a longtime listener of the show, and I've always listened to what you've said. Oh, oh thank you very much, honey. So what's going on? Anyway, I smoke about <laughs> an ounce of spleef every day. <laughs> for the last seven years <laughs> since i was nine. Oh my you, all right talked about smoking weed many times please no we know okay, okay so what's the question all right anyways that's our um, point I realized hold on isn't that our point yes our point but our callers have a way of reading our, but look we should we should we should welcome that they repeat. come on true you know you you <laughs> talked about how evil weed was <laughs> No, you just do that. You know, when you're a teenager and you're stupid, you experiment. So I was dumb. But anyways, I quit. Right. And I just wanted... My life's definitely getting so much straighter now that I've quit. And I just wanted to know, if, are there any long-term effects... That, well, like, have I ruined any part of my brain? Okay, okay. The that, you weren't experimenting. You, you loved it, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so when you love it, you do it every day. And that, that's addiction. And it's rather unusual to be able to put it down and stop without switching over to something else. And you need to the thing you need to watch out for is a the seriousness of the addiction and being able to stop. Secondly, that it can affect your mood for a few months. And in fact, there's a lot of suicidal kinds of thinking in that first six months of marijuana abstinence, sleep disturbances. But the good news about pot is all that memory stuff and mood stuff that you were experiencing, right, Tanya? Yeah, gets better. That there's That's no there's good. no prompt there's no permanent injury from from marijuana it's transient but the the probability of you going back or switching to something else is very high. Well, I've um I've switched I've tried I've gone through like several seminars and I've switched over to exercising and health. Yeah, but that's addicted to that. But I know, but the the idea, Tanya, is to treat the addiction, not to switch addictions. Okay. You, you'll keep switching until you get to some other pharmacological agent, and then you'll be in trouble again. What, you'll store, what typically starts happening is you either start getting panic or anxiety and find your way over to benzodiazepines or have some pain or back pain or some headaches, get onto opiates, and away you go. Yeah. Sound hot, though, doing all that exercise. Yeah, good times. Yeah? Yeah. So she should go to MA. Go, go to, to a 12-step program. Tom? Yeah. <clears throat> you have a question? 
Uh, yeah, but first of all, Dr. Drew. Yeah, Tom. Uh, yeah, you're very smart, but you're no Adam Carolla. Yeah. I should say not. Uh, yeah, I, I, I take this class called Bioethics, and we learned about this program where they actually uh, pay women who are on drugs 200 bucks to, like, get their tubes tied or go on long-term birth control. This was out here in Orange County, in Santa Ana. Hold on Adam. a second. This is the, uh, that's one of the craziest dialect slash yeah. accents. Of now, now, here's what I'm getting. He's calling from Alabama. No, none of that. No, none of that. Oh, it's this is Splash. Guy, uh, uh... Who, who grew up in Boston by way of New Zealand. Yeah. There's a little yeah. Aussie meets bossy. Yeah. <laughs> Tom? Meets Bean. Yeah. Where are you from? Yeah, I was like, I'm from uh, Massachusetts. I straight, got that straight, part. Straight out. But uh, no, nah, I'm not from New Zealand or anything. Maybe uh -huh. maybe the maybe the Boston mixed with the Alabamian. Has affected you, yeah. Nah, I was just totally making up Alabama, though. Oh, you're 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 out in Boston. Yeah, All right. you got a lot of. Boston. You're rangy, brother. All right. <laughs> it's like we it's funny. Figure it's like, it out. Like, puts what? Alabama on there. We're like, now nah, we don't hear any Alabama. It sounds like he's from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'm from Boston. I was lying. Whatever. All right, Whatever. Tom, go ahead. No, I was just wanted to know if you had heard. Oh. Of that. yeah, it was out here in Orange County. It's California, in fact. We had the woman on the show. Oh yeah, the, 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 I really thought she was from up north. We have her as a guest. We did, we did. Remember, Anne, is she up in there? She wasn't. Do you remember? Uh, remember this? Was it from Santa Ana? Wasn't she? That's what I remember. I thought she was from north of here, but maybe. either way, she was a black woman, right? Yeah. Or maybe she was just a white woman. We painted her black so she could get this message across mm -hmm. without being called a racist. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's actually what happened. Either way, she, we airbrushed her. Somebody airbrushed her because it really you, you have to be. Here's the deal. If you're going to start spreading the message of, uh, hey, we will pay you uh, junky uh, moms uh, good money to get your tubes tied, if if you uh, if you look like Jane, uh, let's see, uh, trying to think of who you are. If you look like Anita Bryant, there's an old reference. Julia, wait, what's her name? It ain't going to work. You got to be black or you got to be something. Actually, best to be something that people don't know. Like, you know, once in a while you see these black, but they, maybe they're Hispanic. They could be some Indian or something or Inca or something <laughs> in them. Everyone's scared to say anything. Right. That's Because they, they know the... You crossover. Yeah. If you, you need a nationality that seems to cover five or six, <laughs> everyone's scared to talk. <laughs> they won't even tell a Polak joke in front of you. But anyway, we were uh, we were down with her. Yeah. I don't remember her being all that charming or dynamic, no, though, right. as, I, uh, right. as I recall. But, uh, yes, we need to do this. Yeah. I don't know if that still exists. What one what his bioethics class suggested? Let's let's see what he was taught. All right. Hey Tom. Tom. Yeah. Did your bioethics instructor go for this? Um, I don't know. She doesn't really give out the opinion. She just kind of has the class debate it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. right. What did the class think? Uh, yeah, most of them thought it was a pretty good idea. Yeah, I yeah. don't. Um, I don't think it's uh, such a bad plan myself. Yeah. Should the government be doing that kind of thing? Is the question. Should the government be playing God? No, not playing God. That's playing God. I don't like when people do that. Okay, Bill. Playing God. All right, yeah. And it's very slippery slope, Drew. Oh. Next, you know, we'll you know, be asking people to pay for We'll We'll be paying them to harvest their organs while they're in perfect health. Well, that's already yeah, right? happening. But we'll be paying them to uh, something much more egregious, to offer their lives up for money. They'll be selling their children on children, the black market there you go. Children and money. doing snuff porn. Yes. Yep, yep. Well, it's just like if uh, Dr. Kevorkian is allowed to uh, continue what he's doing. Next thing you know, doctors killing healthy patients. Oh, yes. Of course. Of Slippery course slope. that would happen. Slippery slope, Drew. If the NRA gives up those uh, banana clips with the hollow tip bullets, next thing you know, they're coming in your house. They want your son's Cub Scout knife. Mm -hmm. they, they they empty all the knives and forks out of your tray because somebody could get stabbed You've with it. Seen what's happened at the airport. You, you you think you're allowed to use a carpet cutter or a tile saw or something? No, no, no way. They'll, that they take it all. This is what this is how it works, Drew. You understand? <laughs> so so yeah. Getting pissed off hearing it. Yeah, yeah, but you know the the yeah, but you know what's the slippery slope argument more than not just about anybody, unfortunately. Attorneys. Uh, horrible, horrible attorneys who obviously don't believe it, and then uh, right wingers. They get into that. Really? Too. Yeah, they get into it with the drugs. Oh they yeah, they do it with the drugs yeah, a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a marijuana cigarette. Well, next thing you know, he's tying off and chasing the dragon. Yeah, you're right. Go ahead, Ryan. Raina. Oh, Raina. 
Yes. You're 20? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, I have a question, mm -hmm. kind of. I wanted to say that me and my boyfriend's relationship is great, but I like to get freaky at times, and I like to use a clit simulator and a dildo. And but a dildo, to simultaneously? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, that means at the same time? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> at, well, different times, but at the same, at the, you know. Hold on. Day. Both gonna, using. I, you know hold I mean. on a second. Junior college? No. <laughs> Do you go to junior college? No, I'm trying to get in. I'm hopeful, hoping I can get hoping in. Hoping for junior college. Wow. See? So, junior but, college um, hopeful. That's what I thought. I was getting a sub junior college. <laughs> and by the way, let me explain uh, the entrance criteria for a junior college. It's the actual entrance of the building. <laughs> you just walk in. A pulse. Now you're in junior college. No, that's how you get in, Drew. So you walk in. You walk in. You got to go during the week. That that here's here's the criteria. It's it's got to be. You don't even be, have to walk. It's, Yes. You have to move through the entrance. You must cross the threshold yes. of the administration building. Yes. This is how you're admitted into junior college. Nice. These are the grades you need. You need, here, here's the criteria, Drew. It's very strict. Mm. It's got to <laughs> be a weekday between 7.15 a.m. and 5.35 in the p.m. And you must cross the threshold. You must much, enter the building. Nice. And you must be able to uh, check Oof. off a box on a, a piece Rainer's of paper. Got a lot to now, live keep up in mind. Keep in mind, do not attempt this on New Year's Day, Easter. Well, that'd be a Sunday, so that's it. But some some holidays can fall on different days during Fourth the July. week. Fourth of July could possibly fall on a weekday. Mm -hmm. Do not attempt it. It's it will be closed confusing. down during that. Very confusing. All right. Here we go. Where was Sarah? One. One. Oh, you always do that. My question. Raina, sorry. <laughs> my question was, how can I get him to play with how can I get the him to use them on me? Whoa. He'll sit there and he'll watch, but I can't excite Once him. Once again, to... another guy, boss bringing the forklift in, him going, uh, well, you, you expect me to yeah. to use this instrument as opposed to lifting the pallets? I don't, I don't understand what, what, what the problem with, what's the problem with kids today, Drew? I, I don't get it. Back in my day, we'd use a combo dildo clit stimulator <laughs> the drop of a hat. 22 skidoo. <laughs> Wear a I... raccoon coat while you did it. Take that off. Get to work. So, uh, how's the no, clit stim? Just, how's the clit? Complete different feeling. Quiet. Yeah, but why? Does how's it... the clit stimulator work? It sits right on the clitoris and it vibrates. Um, I don't know. It just... But what is his problem? Uh, with wait, hold on a second. I I know it sits on the clitoris and it vibrates. How does it work? Is it does it snap onto the dildo? Is it a separate item? It's a, it, well, actually, it can come as a dildo. It can come by itself. She has various instruments. Most of the time, they will come with leg straps. Leg straps? Yes. Or well, something you step into and put on. There's one that's called like a penguin, and it's actually shaped like a penguin, and the nose you stick there and. Penguin. Mm hmm. <laughs> and so these are uh, this a hands free device. Hands free. Heads up display. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, l look, yeah. he, you should explain to him that this is something you enjoy, and then uh, there's something wrong with him. Would you say? Yes. I'd be working on you with that uh, dildo like an Eskimo carving a canoe. No, you wouldn't. You'd be napping and letting her Eskimo carving a canoe. I don't get that. Well, can you picture an Eskimo carving a canoe? Yeah. What would he be doing? Like carving out, chopping. Why right, an Eskimo? Right, I don't get all right, it. All right, true. I'd be working on you with that dildo like an Eskimo carving a canoe. Okay. All right, true. Are you sure you don't want to add something? You usually like to add something like yeah, that. You know, I say fruit roll up and whatever. At least you I, say you add something licorice, else that doesn't licorice. make sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's better. All right. Here we go. Hey, yo. It's Loveline, madam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to have to phone to? Let's uh, speak to Sarah, who's 20. Sarah? Hello? What's up? Wow, I didn't think I was ever going to get on the phone with you guys. Yeah. You're one of the earlier call. You haven't not been on hold as long as most of our callers right now, so let's get really? to it. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
Here's my question. It's actually fairly serious. Now, I know that in the beginning of most relationships, they start off, you know, somewhat... Sarah, let me jump in for a second. (laughs) (laughs) You're kind of hot, aren't you? What do you mean? Oh, yes. You're a good-looking girl? Yes. Really? Yes. Have you always been told that? Yes. You get a lot of boys in high school chasing after you? Yes. What do you do now besides say yes? <laughs> I do say no. I do. I do. I promise. No, what do you do for a living? Are you going to school? Waitress? I'm a processor at a mortgage company. Really? Huh. Yeah. See, here's the thing. Like, Describe I yourself. I'm looking. Yes. I'm very intelligent. I've always been told I'm very perceptive. I'm intellectual. I'm a... <laughs> well, let, me, let me translate all that stuff. You're hot, you're hot, you're hot, you're well, hot, you're going, hot. You are so smart. You, how, how perceptive of you, sir. You, really? To <gasps> tell. You, you are so sharp. Let my me grab goodness. my notepad so I can get these pearls down. Oh, that is so funny. All right, baby. Well, I'm in line to be a loan officer in my company. All not right. Not farther than anybody else that I know of my age. All right. That's pretty good. That's good. But you look good, too, right? Yeah, but here's my question. Describe now, yourself very quickly. Oh my God! All right, <laughs> um, five five, yeah. brown hair, mm-hmm. green eyes, and a smile like the sunrise. Green I'm just eyes. kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What's the bod look like? What? What's your body look like? I'm like a buck ten, a buck fifteen. Mm-hmm. Um, I have hair down to the middle of my back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Come on. But the point of my turn, question... Turn your radio... Okay, listen, Sarah. You got to turn your radio down. Off. Turn the radio down. Turn it off. Way down. Yeah. Because they can hear it. Why? All right, you're, cool. you're covered. Now, basically, what my question is, is like, for the majority of relationships in the economy, I mean, there's... Majority of relationships? In, huh, in the economy? In the economy? Well, okay, not in the economy, but in the population with, like, youth today. They're special and magical and great at first, and then, you know, if it doesn't work, it gets complicated in the end. Now, I have had a lot of boyfriends, and, you know, obviously none of them worked out as I'm single. But... All right. Who's, who, tell the guy in the background the, to go to the other room. Wait, would you tell him to kill himself, would you please? And who is that? Who is he? That's uh, my current current boyfriend type person. Is he your boyfriend? I'm not sure. All right. All right. He well, anyway, he is. listen, this genius. Is my question. Yes. My question is basically majority of my. All right. Done. Here, here's her problem. Here's what it said. She said, my question is basically the majority of, this is really what you do when you try to stall somebody. But here's the deal. Listen, listen, get just sort of a feel for the boyfriend she's got right now. And then she, these are the guys she chooses. She's like, basically the majority of, <laughs> turn the radio down. <laughs> like Chewbacca. I think she was like uh, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> All right, look. Sarah. Okay. As fast as you can, what's your question? All right. Now, majority of my relationships, which I have had a lot, they do start off great. Now, majority of them start off to the point to where I honestly feel that I can say, you know, I love you to these people and um, sometimes proposals will even come in line and it Sarah? gets serious Sarah, and what's healthy. The, what's the question? The question is, yes, why no is it do most of the relationships, even the ones that start off great, end up so chaotic? And I mean, how, we're talking how, like how, holes in the walls. Okay, because you're in them and the person. Here's the two people that are in your relationships. You and the person you chose. There you go. That's why there's holes in the wall. Yes. Holy Christ. Do you she, want to try to dissect her a little bit? No. No. Her, her, she needs. She doesn't she needs, track well yeah, yeah, she's got way Smart more. Smart as a whip, this one though. Mm, way more going on than she understands, though. Yeah, there's if way there's way holes more. in the wall, yeah. she's got energy. Uh, Sarah, look into your relationship with your dad. You'll probably find many well, answers there. She, it, this you need to learn about boundaries, boundaries around yourself, boundaries in your relationships, and uh, this is you know something something right. you need to look into. Claire. Yeah. You're 21. Yeah. You got a yeast infection. Um, well, 
Yeah. Fantastic. We got to take a break. <laughs> Fantastic. True. That's who we're going to talk to when we come back. Uh, what about? Mm, mm. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Boyfriend swears she peed on him during sex. What's wrong with him? How dare he? What do you mean? What's wrong with him? We'll find she, out. All right. I think uh, I peed on your hand. <laughs> Line, everybody. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number. Oh, forget about that. I think I'd give it out. We've got an hour left on the show, right? If you want to give it out, you can. 1 800 L O V E 191. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Ready to get back with phones here? Huh? 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 Monica? Yes. You're 22? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, so, okay. This, so, huh? mm-hmm. Okay, well, this is my problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, my boyfriend, well, my ex-boyfriend and I were having sex, and um, he swears that I peed on him. Oh, like, yeah. That happens. No, but does it really happen? Can it happen? Yeah, it happens all the time. Let me let me say this. I, I want everyone to listen on the... Uh, here's, yes, he did, you did, or, or you and, had and a, it's all good. Maybe an ejaculation. You guys can't tell the difference, really. They really can't. Poor Monica just reminded me of something to say. <laughs> I always think about this. You know, there's certain times when people say stuff that they wouldn't say. Like once in a while, you say to somebody, wow, man, you were really snoring last night. And they're like, I don't snore. <laughs> and you go, well, I was sleeping in the bed next to yours in doesn't the same Jimmy, hotel room. Doesn't Jimmy do that? Yeah, Jimmy does that. Oh, that's so annoying. I think he made many snores now. Half the people who snore claim they don't snore. Yeah. But here's my point. Why am I bringing it up? Right. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? I, this I, is what I do. I I'm shack sure. up with people, and then I accuse them of snoring, so they hate me, and we get in bitter arguments about it when they've done nothing. I mean, here's here's what I'm saying. You didn't pee on him. Let's just say you didn't pee on him. This, this, right. this is the guy's M.O. He beds down uh, chicks and then accuses them of urinating on him. Nice. And by the way, if you don't urinate on somebody, don't you sure as hell know you didn't urinate on somebody? Yeah. Like if someone accuses you, hey man, you peed on me while we we're getting it on last night, and you didn't, wouldn't you be like, are you high or yeah, do, you have, like, a, do you have a tumor? This is this is what goes on. You know, th- this goes on in in business all the time too, where you you show up somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? Keep going. And he, I went. I had a guy. Uh, I had a guy uh, he, he, sew on the wrong buttons on a jacket once. Oh yeah. And I came back like yeah, a month yeah. later. I was like, hey, you sewed these buttons on and yeah. uh, you put the wrong buttons on. It's like, <laughs> I didn't do that. And I'm like, what do you think I do? Just is a scam. I just walk into random tailor shops and demand that they switch buttons. You know, like like where would I get this idea? Yeah. This happens. <laughs> this happens all the time. Happens with returning stuff. Just ha- happens happens with stuff like me. Like when you want to leave the movie theater and the guy says, now you can't come back in and you go, look, you can watch me. I'm just going 20 feet. To- no, but, you can't do it. Aside from the sort of systems aspects of it, it's such an unhealthy impulse for a person to take on. It's like, I didn't do that. Whatever it was, I didn't do it. It's like, how do you ever learn about anything? How do you, re- you never make a mistake? Really? Yeah. Nothing ever happens at your, you know what I mean? No. Yeah, well, it's you. Monica? Yeah. So we believe him if uh, he says you peed on him. Because why would he tell you that? Yeah. Or, or an ejaculation. I mean, the women have a bunch of fluid but that, that comes out sometimes. that could be your ejaculation. Exactly. That's what I thought, too. And he was just like, no, you swear. He's like, no, you peed on me. I was like, what are you talking about? I don't know. I was just thinking, well, me, I mean, if it is true, I'm like, is there a problem with me? Like, what happened? What's wrong? I don't know. I just wanted to know, if, like, if it was, like, you know. So it's all me. good. It's good times. All right. It's all good, though, baby. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. The, the one I was trying to think of as my uh, headphones get bad is uh, one time when I ordered a bunch of Chinese food, the guy handed me the wrong bag. I got home with a bunch of uh, beef salad and other crap. I called the place up, and I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, listen, the guy gave me the wrong bag. Uh, I got I got my orders down there. I got a, He's like, no, he didn't. And then, like, <laughs> yeah, he did. My my bag says uh, Mark <laughs> on it. My my stuff should be Adam. <laughs> He said his name was Mark. Uh, I'm like, huh. yeah, that, this is what I do. I order Chinese food. Then I go down the hill and I pick it up using a false name. Then I grab a bag that's not meant for me and bring home half the food that I didn't order. Then I go back up the hill. Then I call the same Chinese place. And 
tell them they gave me the wrong bag so I can come back down the goddamn hill and get my food. Yeah, you get double the food that, that way. That's what my a scam. plan. What a scam. That's my plan. People I, I bring, will do anything. Bring the bag back. <laughs> you know, he said his name was Mark. I know. That's why I get so frustrated with paranoias. Paranoias are such a waste of time. Yes, they are. It's, it's so rare that anything that you feel paranoid about actually bears fruit. So rare. Yes. People in general don't care about you. Yes. You got to explain this to your wife, though, by the way, Drew. She's, She's got a lot of theories paranoid. this one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Claire? Yeah. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Well, um, I got a yeast infection, and I used, like, the one-day treatment thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought it was gone, and I had sex with my boyfriend, um, unprotected. And I feel like now that I realize it's not gone and I'm treating it, I'm worried that I gave it to him and he's going to give it back to me. How do you know it's a yeast infection? Maybe it's something else. Well, I've gotten them before, and um, you just know. I mean, I don't think it's something. I, I don't, how, do you, how, do you tell right. it, how do you tell it from other bacterial causes of vaginitis? Well, uh, it's the... the let, let me answer. I mean, it's, a, it's a rhetorical question. You, you, you can't. Right. You can't tell the difference. Oh, okay. So this might be an, an STD that you're passing back and forth, and you're really not treating it full with the yeast medication. So oh. you, you need to see a doctor and have culture, have it looked at, see if there's anything going on. You're, you're right, though. There is such a thing as him giving yeast back to you. It's kind of unusual. Men can harbor a little bit of the yeast in the tip of their, of their penis. You could, wear, you could try treating yourself, have him wear a condom for a week, and see if that clears it up, but it may not be a yeast infection. If it's an STD that we've been passing back and forth, right? What I mean, what kind of STD has the same symptoms? Other, you know, other kinds of vaginitis, trichomonas, Gardnerella, that kind of thing, Haemophilus. There's a bunch of them, and probably it's treatable. It's all very treatable. Okay. Although the the big concern with um, most of those these days is during pregnancy, they can cause problems with early early birth. Okay, well, and also, good. can I just have a, another quick question? If I'm on birth control, and, and we're in like a serious deal, like I don't, we don't need to use a condom, right? No. Well, here you, you, you were talking about you passing something back and forth, so. Well, I mean, yeah, but other than. Oh, except you know, for the STD, they're passing back and forth. No, don't worry. Well, about yeah, that. when when we clear that up and that's all taken care of, it's up to you. If he is harboring yeast. Can he get treated with something? Is there like he doesn't? Kind of yeah, but he probably doesn't need it. Well, the yeasty on the pegaroo. <laughs> but you know, I was reading some, some data about how people in their twenties expect their partners to cheat. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like there's an eighty percent probability. And I thought, wow, no wonder. You're right. Maybe the condom does need to be like universally worn. All is the time. there an eighty percent probability? Well, the expectation is eighty percent. Whether or not they actually are no. doing it. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Huh? Yeah, you know, cheating, uh, cheating's rough when you're, uh, you know, living in a smaller town. <laughs> Here we go. Well, <laughs> you got to, uh, no, I'm saying a man, like, apart, man like myself. No, what I mean is, is, you know, once you uh, get your feet <laughs> under you, you oh, do yeah. a little, little business traveling. Right. I say, hey, baby, I'm going to uh, Canada for four days on some business. All right, that's cheat. That, now you can cheat. You go to Canada, you go stay in some hotel, you uh, hook up with some hooker, whatever. I don't understand the guys who cheat when they're like 19 and they work at the same place with the person they're cheating with along with their girlfriend. Like, it's kind of tough. It's like trying to beat off in the same tent when you're camping with your dad and you're 14. And, and God knows when you've done that, Adam, that's been tough. Yeah, that was tough. I, well, thank God my dad never... Uh, picture my Close your eyes, picture my dad camping. Yeah, how would that work? It wouldn't work. He could, wouldn't, no, wouldn't, he'd have to leave the house. He, he couldn't he, do that. He, Here's the deal. That's Picture confusing. my dad owning a piece of camping equipment. Or That's what I'm saying. He, would, he like wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have a sleeping bag. Impossible. Yeah. But, so I never had to do that. But I do have friends who have actually beat off in the same bed with their dads. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. M more than one. Hey, when you're a 15-year-old kid... <laughs> uh, it's game on. It's game on. Yeah. Your dad's sawing logs. You yeah. guys are at a okay. Kano Lodge. Uh, again, He's on the other women, side of the king yeah, bed. Again, women, listen carefully to this. This is how different men are. Yeah. Well, different that biology is, baby. All right, let's talk to uh, Brent. Oof. Brent's twenty-one. Brent. Oh uh, yeah. What's up, Brent? Hey, um, Adam. I think I have a theory on um, uh, on the breast cup size. The how the uh, system works. It goes A, B, C, D, and then like double D and then E. It goes triple D. I, I think it can go to triple Does triple D. Triple? Oh, I well, might. It, it works either way. Um, my theory was that. Um, uh, like when when they first instated in the system, 
it was just it just went A B C D, and that over time, like through uh, uh, you know uh, evolution or uh, maybe Brent, Brent there's one thing about theories. There yeah. must be evidence. There must be evidence. Yeah. What's your evidence? Well, well, my evidence is that um, uh, breast breast uh, sizes have been getting larger over time. How do you figure? Well, you know, through obesity rates and uh, you know maybe just uh, natural selection, as it were. <laughs> you mean the, the, the smaller breasted women are killed off? No, I mean they they don't breed as much as larger breasted women. <laughs> and your evidence for that is <laughs> well, it's, I, it's I can't argue with that speculation. one. Yeah, yeah, speculation. Yeah, but the problem, yeah, the problem uh, that doesn't hold water because there's more uh, tfing <laughs> going on with the uh, bigger breasted ones. So <laughs> le less babies, more sex, less babies. Right. Yeah, uh, but so your your theory is. Okay, but let me ask. Here, let me poke some holes in your theory for a second here. Okay, I've always wanted to know. It goes, you know, A cup, B cup, C cup, D cup, right? Double D cup. Why did it do that? Not just why go to not e? just go to E cup? Now, your theory is is well, this is a, a a unit of measurement that was established a long time ago when breasts were smaller. Right. That doesn't prevent it from going on to E. Makes it must have zero difference in yeah, that department. Yeah, why the double D and the triple D? Why not just write on to E as the historical evolution unfolded? Well, well I, I just thought that uh, whoever the guy was that... Um, the one guy who yeah, invented guy, the alphabet. Guy. The guy right. that... <laughs> Dr. Brahman, yes. That, um, maybe... Uh, it was Dr. Brazier. There's no way the breast could get any larger. Like, after, after All D. All right, but then they did get larger. Right, so then he said double D. Why didn't he say, why didn't he say e? e? Why, why didn't he, he say E? Because all right, and why? And if he started the double D thing when he decided to go to E, why didn't you say double E? Because because after a while he just said screw it, and then just all right, oh, uh, yeah, Brent, Brent you're Come such on. a you're a retard. <laughs> My God, are you retarded? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're you better hope you're stoned or drunk or something. <laughs> it's a horrible <laughs> argument. <laughs> what are you doing, junior college? No, I'm working. in uh, a uh, university. Really? Yes. Are you sure? I'm I'm an engineer actually. Really? What kind of engineer? Mechanical. Holy ass. I'm not driving on any bridge you designed, Brent. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. by George the way, Tech. um you yeah. all had a caller last week, uh Ingrid or something, mm -hmm. and she was doing all those prank calls. Yes. And um Dr. Drew, you got mad because uh or a, a little, a uh, little frustrated because uh, you guys didn't um, sniff her out earlier. Yeah. But uh, I was listening, and um, like when she first started calling in, uh, you all thought it was bogus. And Adam, asked, you actually asked her, and um, but uh, she had said uh, she kept repeating that no, this wasn't a bogus call. So you so, guys, so did. we had a wow. sense of it. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. We are, we we doubted ourselves for a minute or two. <laughs> well, let me say this. It's against the Geneva Convention yeah. of bogus calls to have somebody say, is this a bogus call? Is this a bogus call? Is this a bogus call? And you, the 14-year-old crying teenager who's being sexually abused, continues saying no. I mean, you just can't do that. It's like crying wolf or right. saying the movie theater's on fire. You right. just I don't care how outlandish it is. If someone says their house is on fire or somebody's got a gun, if you're in a certain position of responsibility, you just, you are... Uh, bound. You're bound. Thank you, Drew. Duty bound. Yes. You're bound to respond. So I guess we did ask her if it was bogus, and she kept going. And listen, here's how the bogus game goes. It's a game. If you get caught, you get caught. Right. Here's what the bogus game is. The bogus game is like Marco Polo. The, the person in the pool has their eyes closed. Here's the deal. if You can screw with them all day if, if you want. And, uh, but, you, you know, I mean, if the, person, if the person who's closing their eyes wants to open, your, open their eyes, they can just win immediately. Yeah. I mean, in every game you play, you have to have a certain, a certain dignity that comes with it. I mean, each yeah. person has certain dignity. Yes. If you get busted, there, there, you get there's busted. There's rules of fair play. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You can you can win most games by cheating if That's you right. want. Exactly. Uh, but the question is, why are you playing a game? And what good is winning if you're cheating, Grace? Unless there's money involved, then it's a totally different thing. Grace, you're 23. And we're 23, yeah. What's up? Um. Well, 
Long story. Um, for a while, I've been interested, intrigued by the whole world of bondage, dominatrix, mm -hmm. S&M, mm -hmm. and never really done anything with it, except like two, three years ago, my roommate jokingly got me a pair of fuzzy handcuffs, and like that's the Fettine that Fettine cuffs? Fettine cuffs? Fuzzy handcuffs. Fuzzy handcuffs. Wow. Did Lay that, that one back, please. Anderson. Oh, Anderson's not like... Anderson, can you play her fuzzy handcuffs back? It was about four sentences ago. That was the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I heard the word fettine cuffs. Uh, All right, go ahead there, Grace. Fuzzy handcuffs. And I've never really experimented anything more than that. Well, what did you do with the fuzzy handcuffs? What's your Use question? Them on the guy I was seeing at the time. Right, what's, your, right. what's your question? So who cares? What's, what's up? What's your question? Well, um, a few weeks ago, I found out that other friends I know have been in this world and done this pretty religiously, uh, and it sparked my interest again. But this time, I'm in a long-term committed relationship, and he is completely anti. What's your question? My question is, how do I know? Like, is I don't know if this is really something that I want to do, or if it's just the whole tabooness. No, of it. you you are it's clearly you you have a fetish. Well, I would suspect you probably were sort of smacked around a little bit. And, yeah. Well, yeah, probably. She's and twenty three. She hasn't really gotten into anything. Well, no, yet. but no, no, no. I'm not saying she is completely into it. I'm just saying she has a fetish. She's she's preoccupied with it. She probably was physically abused in some way that sort of wired that in. Did you get physically abused growing up? Um, not growing up, but yeah. Okay. What do you mean? Um, long story short, raped by an old boyfriend. Yeah, mm. something happened before that yeah. too. That doesn't count. Yeah. When were you raped by an old boyfriend? When? How old were yeah. you? Um, eighteen. Mm, nah. But had something to make her a victim. You know what I mean? What happened with the old boyfriend? Um, we were seeing each other. Found out he'd been cheating the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, then saw him again like a year or two later and like I kind of had made a promise to him he says that I give my virginity to him I said no it's not going to happen he said yeah it is where were you? Um, naked in his bedroom <laughs> <laughs> where, where were you with this old guy that you didn't like anymore that he could rape you? um well, my parents had moved out of the house, and he wanted to go back to the house. Memories, I don't know. He was back in town. And stupidly, I took him, and yeah. All right. Did you call the cops or anything? Um, No, but I smashed a lamp over his head. Oh, right. You smashed a lamp over his head? Yeah. When he was leaving? Well, where, where was in he? The middle, during. During? During the sex, wow. Yeah. Oof. Whoa, what happened? Um, I left, left him there. Unconscious? I don't even know. Like, I've talked to him once since, and he didn't feel like he did anything wrong. Was uh, he unconscious when you left? I, do, I don't know. Well, I, you hit him with a lamp. What did he do? He just kind of fell over. I Like, I struggled off, and struggled I got out of the house. All right, anyway. He just ran out of your house? Yeah. Uh, okay. Like I got in my car and like All right. drove a block. And anyway, so All right. Well, that's good. Let's hit him with a lamp. Okay. Um. Uh, so, anyway, Grace. And so. Yeah. I'm thinking that's kind of the driving force for me to do this. But he says no. Feeling like it's therapy to to like act no, out. No. 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 It will, it will not become therapeutic. It will become a preoccupation. Yeah. And it will t keep you from being intimate again, which I think is something a pretty easy place for you to go right if now. If you're on the cusp of something that's going to be a lifetime worth of work, don't do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're thinking about heroin or crack, but you're not quite sure, it, it's a full-time job. Well, Bondage, she, it's a full-time job. she's buying that crap that it's just an expression. And no. I solve my problems. It's, it's, it. No. it becomes a full-time ass job. Do you have that, uh, her saying fuzzy handcuffs? Here we go. Yeah, it's not that good, though. Well, we want to hear it. want to hear it. Jokingly got me a pair of fuzzy handcuffs. Uh, it does sound like fuzzy yeah, handcuffs. Did and why did you and I both hear not fuzzy it's handcuffs? Her, it's her inflection. 
that... jokingly got me a pair of fuzzy handcuffs. Fuzzy handcuffs. Fuzzy handcuffs. Fuzzy handcuffs. Oh, yeah, I just heard... Fu- you know what it is? You know what I think you and I both do, Drew? Uh, I think we turn our brains down a little bit sometimes, so it's not to hear everything that comes through. Yes. I mean... Uh, we're trying to. We're looking for through the soup for the for the the real story. Yeah, but you know, sometimes you're watching TV and talking on the phone. Yeah, yeah. You you turn the set down, but not so much that you can't hear anything. You want right. to hear every third word. Yeah. So you can sort of follow the story. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Fedayeen cups. Jason. Hi. Hey. Hi. So I've been on hold for like while. I've like gone to Walmart. Wow, you've been on hold for hundred minutes. Yeah. And no yeah. serious from this guy. No, I love this man. What's up, Jason? I just want to say I listen to you guys all the time and oh. love you guys' show. After 100 minutes. Thank you. To the, uh, to, the, uh, to the tune of? Earlier about the whole boyfriends being uncomfortable with the vibrator thing. Yeah. No idea why they're uncomfortable, man. Yeah. No clue. My woman loves that stuff. Loves it. Are you framing a house or something there, uh, Jason? Yeah, we're, we're going inside. Where are you, Jason? Just a second. Say what? Where are you? I am now in my house. You're in your house now. He just came from Walmart. Were you really at Walmart? Yeah. Oh. Where are you calling from, Kansas? Yep. You guys, they sell fireworks over there? In Missouri. (laughs) Why? Just across the border. Just across the border? I'm jealous of states that get to uh, use fireworks. We don't get any fireworks. We don't get any fireworks out here in LA. It's especially a problem out here because of the fires. It's just weird in Missouri because we're like right right by the border, like the state Any, line. Is like anyway, blind. yeah. Jason, you waited a hundred minutes. We'll have to make you. Did make he it. have a question? Yeah, but we got to go to break. So wow, he's pretty chatty for a guy who's been on hold for a hundred minutes. You think he'd want to get to his question? Well, he'll get there. They're thinking to make up fireworks. Uh, they're thinking of outlawing them in uh, Los Angeles. I think they are outlawed in Los yeah. Angeles, but they're thinking of not having them sold in, like, Los Angeles County or oh. something anymore. Yeah, so places like Alhambra, where you can still get them, won't be able to do it anymore. Yeah. What are we heading toward here? A couple of stupid kids lose a finger. That's a, That's it. Everything. Nothing. Nothing anymore. Tickets. Got to have Got a seatbelt on. Got to be wearing a helmet. No more fireworks. Can't, can't, talk, do. can't talk on the phone while you're driving. Can't talk on the phone while you're driving. You're going to get tickets soon. Slippery slope, Drew. That your, is a slippery slope. Your slope. kid... Wasn't uh, rolled in uh, packing peanuts and duct tape wearing a hockey helmet before he left the house. I'm going to give you a ticket for that. It's all the crazy stuff with the car seats and all the airbags and all the everything. What's going on? Big nation of pussies? Really? I'm, I, fireworks is, is as... If you're, if you're a 9, 10-year-old boy or girl, if you're a young person, fireworks, greatest thing ever. Greatest day of your life. That big box of fireworks mm-hmm. that my friend's dad would get uh, once in a while. Oh, yeah, it's really not your dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, just close your eyes. Picture my dad. I'll just start throwing out words like camping, <laughs> fireworks, motorcycles, go-karts. You just see what comes to mind. Yeah, wood shop, tools. You Garage. Just, you what comes to mind. Yeah, uh, tell me what comes to mind. Cars. Auto show, oh. car race. You just tell me what comes to mind. Oh. Firing range. Just uh, tell me what you think. There. That's all Ball you game. Oh. Tell me what you think, Drew. All right. Uh, but anyway, look, here's all I'm saying. A couple of, couple of houses with shaker roofs catch on fire every year, and a couple of uh, nine-year-olds get their pinkies blown off. Okay, that's true. What about the collective fun of millions? I, I'm serious. I'm not being facetious. It's worth a kid losing his finger so millions can have a good time. That's what this is. Be- uh, look, a couple of people die in amusement parks uh, every year. They die on jet skis. They die Every time there's something fun, somebody ends up dying. They really do. A couple of high school football players die every year. Somebody dies every year doing something fun. Do we we got to pack it all in? That's it? That, this Here's our plan. It's a slippery slope. Everyone lives. Nobody has any fun. That, that sounds like a great plan. All right. We'll be back. Yep. That's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Drew. 1-800-LVE-191. I'm just chatting with the producer Ann during the commercial break about the uh, pure joy that fireworks bring to a young child. Mm-hmm. Seeing that big old box come home from the store. The box. You really just stare at the box for a while. That's almost enough. Or you catalog and study each of the cones. Open and the thing up. Yeah. What do we got? 
Whew, we got a piccolo Pete. <laughs> we got some flowers. We got some sparklers. Roman candle and a fountain. Oh, and a smoky Joe. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start. We're starting with the sparklers. We're starting with sparklers. But we're not going to light them until the street lights come on. We don't, you, you don't want to waste a sparkler. Well, it's dusky. It's got to get dark. Go sparkler. Then we'll go. We'll do some flowers. Then, uh, then we'll do one fountain. We have three fountains. Let's go one. We'll take a break. We'll take a break, and we'll cool down. Then we uh, we boot up again with the sparklers. And then we get bored and start throwing sparklers at each other or stabbing each other with the sparklers or doing that thing where we hold two and run around the lawn. <laughs> we end with the uh, Piccolo Pete. That's the big one. Yeah, and that's big. That's the big and, crescendo. And we'll, we'll take a plier and crunch it at the bottom. Yeah, get yeah. it to blow. Yeah, yeah. flowers were kind of nice, too. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, what, well, here's what we're basically saying. It is true once in a while somebody gets hurt by this, and it's true once in a while there's a fire started by this. So what? Everything's that way. Not, there's, there's nothing, nothing that exists worth worth having that doesn't that doesn't involve that certain element of risk. It's fine. I don't want to live in a pussy nation. I want to have a good time. People be responsible. Hey, if a parent blows his kid's hand off with an M80, then the parent needs to get into trouble for it. That's it. Yeah. To make it illegal, no one can touch anything now. We can't have any fun. The sober people, I don't include myself in that group, but I mean, people who want to safely use something responsibly can't be done anymore. All right. Let's talk to poor Jason. Now he's up 110 minutes here. Jason, <laughs> there we are. Hi. So, what's the question? I agree with this fireworks speech, but uh, my question is. Um, me and my fiance, we, we really don't want kids. We just really don't want kids. Never want them. Um, I want one like 10 years from now. She's saying she doesn't want them. Um, okay. Her, her so you might want kids. You but... might want kids at some point. How old is your fiance? She's older, right? Say what? Yeah, she's like two years older than me. I just got the older, a huh. couple years older vibe. All right. And so what's the question? Why doesn't she ever want to have kids? That that's trouble, by the way, with a woman. Um, I don't really know. Mm. Bad sign. She professional? Ah, uh, no, no, just no maternal instincts, really. Mm. Right. Yeah, this usually means they've been carved out of her. She has a lot of she has a lot of brothers and sisters. Ooh, she had to raise them. Um, she probably had to help her. I bet okay. she. Biological that, that's father a, is is really worthless. Yeah. That that's one of the reasons that gets washed out is you, you raise a you know a whole le- you know whole whole yeah and you have a horrible brood. horrible yeah, dad yeah, yeah. Something to do with it. okay uh, and, so do you want although usually the uh, procreation thing is um, kind of a mom thing too like, mm-hmm. does yeah. she not get along with her mom too well no she gets along with her mom's great oh, all right anyway so you want to have a, a vasectomy yeah yeah we were thinking about it because she's she's on birth control but right. that's not 100 percent all right that's but she's accidentally gotten pregnant once not with me but with another guy well it used properly the birth control is virtually 100 percent yeah and, it's and, not worth and a tricycling and shit i mean that's virtually 100 percent. and you're saying you might want children at some point in your life and yet you're going to take an irreversible irreversible essentially well, irreversible. Well, I heard it's reversible, but I figured, you know, if I no. got off in a couple of cups first, no. it'd be safe. No. Well, yeah, what about so what about that? Yeah, artificial insemination. Yeah. Right, just, just in case it didn't get, you know, take the precautionary measure. She was also thinking about having her tubes tied on the reverse side of the surgery, too. Boring. All right. Get uh, Anderson, uh, Homer Simpson's right. It, what he needs to do, store some of that semen, take some of that chi, top off a Boda bag with it, put it in the freezer, and then uh, go ahead and get get his nuts I don't, cauterized. I don't know the data on what the probability is of reversibility if you set it up that way, and or how much you're guaranteed to be able to use that sperm over what period of time. And you got to pay also to have that stuff stored, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I believe so. Of course. <sighs> Wait, Drew, what's it called? And why can't you just freeze your own sperm? Like in your refrigerator? Yeah. Cause I, think, I believe it has to be liquid nitrogen. It has to be very, very frozen. Colder than frozen? Yeah. How does stuff get colder than frozen? You know, don't all the molecules just stop when it's frozen? They're still crawling around. You just water, though. It's yeah. Different. Everything hits a solid state. Yeah. If it's cold enough, it's hard. It's harder to freeze. Ni- semen. Nitrogen is is a gas, and you're yeah. taking it all the way to solid. Right. Or liquid, anyway, and that has to be very, very cold for that to happen. I, I know, but I'm talking about sperm. If I if I beat off in an ice tray when I come down the next morning, it's 
It's going to be frozen, isn't it? Yes. So, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll conduct my own experiment. All right. I'll get back with you tomorrow. Gabby? Hey. You're 19? Yeah. You know what makes a nice summer treat, Drew? <laughs> You, you beat, beat off, off into ice trays. Beat off into an ice tray. Put a little popsicle stick in it. No, but, but you got to put some saran wrap over oh, yeah, the top. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Then you put a toothpick in it so it holds it upright. Right, okay. Right. Next day, kids. Uh, Sparkles. Li- licking good time. That's right, Gabby. Yeah. All right, go ahead. You're 19. Yeah, I, my boobs are two different sizes. Nice. Yeah, that's very common. And but it's like really obvious. Like if you look at me and I'm not wearing a bra. It's very common. What do you think the size is? Uh, one's like a small double D, and the other one's like a large double D. Isn't a small double D just a D? No, it's bigger than a D, but it's not really. Okay, so in the there's, middle. there's something in between. <laughs> D. There's something in between D and double D, Drew. And and somebody has what commented on this or made you feel bad about it? No, I'm just really self-conscious about it. I see. Most women and have... By the way, small double D and big double D, that just looks like a big set of cans to most yeah, guys. Yeah, guys would not make that... The guys would not be able to tell. They, they, uh-huh. And many women have directionality of the nipples. Yeah, we don't care. Size and we don't care. I'm not worried about guys. I mean, I'm set with that. I just... It's She's really lesbian. uncomfortable for me. Are, like, you, are you a lesbian? No, I'm engaged. Engaged to a woman? To a guy. Okay. Uh, what is, uh, how big's the rest of you? Uh, I'm like 5'5". Five, five. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Radio <laughs> math without the weight. <laughs> this is brutal. Oh, let no. Me, let me I weigh yeah. 140 pounds. All right. Let me just do that math. 5'5", five, five, 140. Give me the five. I get uh, five three. And fifteen sixteenths, Drew, yeah. and uh, one forty nine. Okay. okay, so you can have. Uh, well, I don't really even know what kind of surgery you can have here. You can have yeah. one reduced a little. That's gonna look. It, believe me, if you have, if you have, you can have one both, of them worked you, you on, it's them, gonna look weird. You have to have them both reduced, probably. You want to have them both reduced? No, I don't want my boobs smaller. All right, well then, relax. good girl. I'd rather one bigger. You well, do. All right. Well, they, uh, they're probably something they could do I, I, with the implants and things. But still, you're already a double D. Yeah, one's a small double D. Yeah. You sounded hot, Gabby, in a kind of biker bitch kind of way. Gabby. Yes. Why are you engaged already? You're 19. It's a little young, I isn't it? Be? Oh, well, I'm happy. You're happy. You got a good guy. Yeah. How old is he? He's 19. Oh. What's he do? Work around metal. Oh, he's a mortgage broker. Really? Yeah. At 20? 19? 19-year-old mortgage broker? Yeah. How do you do that? He got lucky. Does he have somebody he knows who was his dad working in the business or something? No, actually, he just got offered the job by a guy he didn't know who was really impressed by him. Okay. No way. <laughs> he's in organized crime. I have no idea how this world works anymore. Wow. And he just got offered the job? It's a 19-year-old mortgage broker? Walking i got to look into this stuff. I should have been doing that. I worked at a travel agency when I was 19. <sighs> oh, yeah. Five horrible bitchy cows all yelling at me all day. Did mm-hmm. I say five? 25. Whoa. 25. How long did you work there? Nah, it was I, probably yeah. about four months. I oh, got arrested really? and I got fired. Ah. That was... Uh, I was working at Hoffman Travel when I had those warrants. And, uh, I remember when we first started touring around with Loveline, the TV show, and they that's who showed up to do the travel. Hoffman Travel? Yeah, remember that? Yeah, what I tell them? You, well, you were sort of stunned, and, uh, you know, I don't remember you just telling me the story. Did you tell them to screw off? Oh, true. I don't remember. What would you tell them? Uh, you never, you know, you're just never any good for anything. Well, tell me, what would you tell them? You know what I told him. I would tell him to go back to their office and tell Hoffman Travel Adam Corolla said to kiss their uh, kiss his ass. I don't, I don't remember that. Oh, please, yes, you do. You don't remember it because it's funny. You, you only remember. Me. Yeah, I'm done with you. How dare you? You never remember anything good. Oh, it's always. Uh, Why well, just remember? You that- remember that uh, half? It's happened ten times. That we've had Hoffman travel? Yeah. I only remember them once, the one woman at the curb at the very, very first time we traveled. Yeah. And that was it. It was like for three seconds. All right. We're taking a break. All right. No. 
there. Drew just asked me if I wanted him to lie when he doesn't remember things. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. How was that? How was that? How was that? All right, ready to go? Yep. Chris? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm 20, but... All right. Hey, uh, Whatever. Whatever, yeah. Hey, um, I got my dick pierced, and mm -hmm. I was just wondering if it would bust a condom or something like that if I had sex. Junior college? Mm, yeah. I'm... Oh. <laughs> yeah, it could. You got to get special condom. What kind of piercing did you get? It's a PA or Prince Albert. Mm-hmm. Good times. Has that helped you? Did, did the ladies enjoy that? Uh, actually, I just got it a few days ago, and Oof. man, it just stopped bleeding, so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And do you have a girlfriend? No, not right now, but well, I'm just... Well, right now, I don't. Well, right now, right you don't. Now. Okay. Yeah. But you, you, you've had a girlfriend before, and you may have one in the future. Yeah. No, yeah. May have one in the future. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. All right. I think, uh, and by the way, shouldn't you uh, talk to your... Your piercer? Your friendly yeah. neighborhood piercer about that? It, it turns out Trojan makes one of these extra thick ones, too. I didn't know that. But there's some they usually sell at the uh, shop there, the piercing shop, where they're just particularly the tip, there's uh, extra reinforcement. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's rock, rock around the clock here. Alana? Hi. What's up? Hi. Well, I'm here with my friend, Cecily. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> and we are big fans of yours, Adam. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I was I was disappointed when you got married because I, I was, I don't know, I sort of had my heart set, but... Oh, uh, we, we, we swing. Uh, <laughs> we got an open uh, thing, well, yeah. Yeah, good to know that. Here's how we swing. But, uh, uh, I beat off and uh, don't tell her about it. <laughs> Uh -huh. so it's her version. That's our version of swing. Nice. It's an open relationship. I, I'm really... Dr. Drew, I love you, too. But Thanks, Mom. Adam Kroll, I'm your best <laughs> Yeah. But, so, Thank you. Um, we are big fans, so we're off of school already. Of course, no one wants to be in school. <laughs> we decided that we would go to school just to try and see the alma mater of Adam Carolla. Oh, really? So we Go went to pay North homage to the... You went to North Hollywood High. Yes. Yeah, how was that we for you? Disappointed. Really dirty. <laughs> oh! But they kicked us off. They wouldn't let us stay. What? Well, what? How did they? How did they find out who you were? Well, we went on. We sort of didn't get passes, and we went <laughs> on, and we wanted to see if there were any old teachers there who you had or anything. Yeah. And then a teacher ended up not letting us in their classroom and told us to get visitors' passes from the office. And they said that they would let us get the passes, so we were like, okay. So we went there, and the they told us that we couldn't. And was this a teacher that Adam had mentioned? <laughs> No, we no. just went to. We were just asking, and we just old teachers. Yeah, well, <laughs> they'd have to be pretty old. Well, no, not, no I mean, we've been there for a while, not old. It's but. beautiful. Uh, my dad's house is about a uh, hundred feet from that place. By the way. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Your dad, your dad, or your mom's. Is it Studio City or North Hollywood? It's uh, North Hollywood. Uh -oh. uh, that, I, yeah. What's that? Is your mom's house the Munster House? Well, that's about uh, that's about four blocks. Oh really. Yeah, this place is oh, closer. Oh, my was, like, four blocks away, too. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, maybe it's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> hey, good times, girls. Thanks well, listen, me. thank you for uh, for worshipping me. I have one last request. <laughs> yeah. Could you play the little clip of Snoop Dogg saying, that's what my man mayonnaise? Yeah. <laughs> thank you that. so much. Thank you. And action. That's my main main mayonnaise. <laughs> I didn't see Snoop's new show on MTV. Did you uh, catch that, Drew? No, how was it? You heard? I, I didn't hear anything about it. hear about all those boys getting arrested, though? No. I did uh, no, hear happened? about all those boys uh, getting arrested uh, last night at the BET Awards. Uh-oh, for what? Uh, they basically showed up in uh, essentially like an armored car and uh, had a lot of uh, warrants and ammunition and guns and hollow-point bullets and things like that. And it just basically... You know, I mean, if you think about... what's the, What was the plan? Speaking of what's in it for them. What's the plan? You got to roll with your posse, Holmes. Yeah, but the posse has to be armed to go to a night out? You, uh, that's, yeah, you got to have your protection, <laughs> yo. Really? Yo. You, you never chisel. know. Yeah. There was a lot of heat when they came in here, too. Well, they all, they're all packing. Oh, really? really? Oh, yeah. How about when they were in Vegas that one time? 
What? That, when, that time when, we did the when they shot anchors. Tupac? No, no. When you we were there with them when you they did oh. crank anchors. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we when we brought Snoop out to do uh, crank anchors. Well, he came in a bus. He had a big posse. I don't know if they were packing. Well, I'll, I'll ask next time I see uh, my brother, man. <laughs> Al. That's my main main man name. Now, what are the names? Is this is is this L, is this yes. L? L? Yeah. What's up, L? Well, um, this last weekend, I went to um, my current, well, we split up last week, my ex-boyfriend's um, brother's wedding. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of relatives there, and um, uh, there was a, after the reception, there was a barbecue up at his house. So I went to the barbecue, and, and we ended up drinking a little bit, actually a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I spent the night but I was in the living room with um, a bunch of other people, and I ended up having to share this air mattress with um, my ex-boyfriend's best friend and his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Well, I woke up um, in the middle of the night to him grabbing my ass, which was a little strange, and so I thought he, I don't know, might have the wrong person, except he kept, he started to go down the front of my shorts and he went up my shirt and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know to, what I should do if I should roll over and say something or just lay there and, and hope he'd stop Yeah. or what I should do. And I ended up waking up two or three more times to it again. And I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should say something to my ex-boyfriend or... This was your ex-boyfriend that did this? No, this is his best friend. His best friend. And this is your ex-boyfriend's best friend? Yeah. And his girlfriend was asleep on the air mattress with you, too? Yeah. And she never woke up? I don't think so. I don't know. And he never did anything more than feel you? No. But why, yeah, why didn't you get him to stop? I didn't know what to do because there was a room full of people, and I didn't want them to think that I had started it. Because oh, hold on, hold on a second. So. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Listen, you're you're on an air mattress with a guy and his girlfriend. All of a sudden, you pop up, pull it, get, straighten up your shirt, and say, uh, hey, "Hey, listen, yeah. quit quit groping me." And everyone says, "You started it." I didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, listen, something's wrong. I didn't want to. I don't. I mean, either you got victimized or you're just into drama. I don't, no, no, I I don't want to say anything to anyone because I don't know how they're going to react. Well, all right, why are you calling us then? Because I don't know what I should do. You don't stay, want to say stay anything. Stay away from this guy. What do you mean you don't know what you should well, do? Well, what are you going to do now? I mean, it's, it's really nothing. It's, it's not like you can collect the forensic data and make a case against this guy. The guy did something inappropriate. Your Honor, he's got boob sweat on his palm. <laughs> He's a bad guy. You don't want to be around. Stay away from him. That's it. You, and next time when people do things you don't want them to do, stand up for yourself. You big gal? And if, and if you can't, you got a problem. Am I big? No. Yeah. You have no boyfriend now, though, right? <laughs> no. Why not? Um, it's We've been together almost seven years, and he decided he wanted to see what, what else there was available. Yeah. I knew we broke up with you. <laughs> you have a boyfriend now. What? All right. Hold on. Let no, she has no through. boyfriend. No boyfriend. Here's, here's, this happens once in a while. I, this sounds cruel, but once in a while, if a chick gets dumped, and I knew this guy dumped her, yeah. and they will put themselves in a situation and create a little heat around them, like, hey, this guy was, I'm, I, yeah, what, what it is is, hey, look at me, I'm desirable. Right. I got to call you and tell you what you're I got to tell you that this guy could not keep his hands away from me because. I mean, I understand how this works. But didn't she have a strange quality about everything was very e e robot-like? E yeah, yeah. Elle? Yeah? What's the what's going on? What are you doing? Are you working? Yeah, I I work and what I do, go What do you do? And... What do you do for a living? I'm an input operator. Yeah. That's probably... Computer. <laughs> Computer stuff? Um, I, I talk on the phone all day, essentially. I, I um, take orders from... From clients. And okay. Work. All right. All right. So uh, listen, Al. Don't tell anybody about this. Okay. Just get on with your life. Well, tell All your right. friends for support. And, and no, 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 oh, I mean, if guy. you're if you're yeah. traumatized, talk to your friends about it. But I don't think you're traumatized, are you? No, I just 
I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I well, should say something. At this no. point, no. Don't say anything. What are you can just stay away from this guy. And your ex-boyfriend, too. What are you hanging stay out with Stay away from uh, air mattresses uh, filled with the people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, real fast. Kristen? Yeah. You're 15? Yeah. Um, I want to know about breast reduction because mm-hmm. I'm looking to get one when I'm 18. And yeah. I heard that, like, they hurt really bad and it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, uh, how big are you? I'm a 34 double F. Double F? Yeah. And, uh, how tall are you? Five, five. Was there a uh-huh. double bouncy, E? Bouncy, 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 bouncy. Uh, how much do you weigh? I weigh 140. Ooh. How tall? Five, five, five. five. one, four, oh. No radio math. No radio math. But, uh, you're looking to get a reduction at 18. Yeah. Uh, if you, if you, you, yeah. you, you could probably get one before then if you're, you know, a true candidate for it. Which it sounds like you might be. Which you might be. Huh. But Kristen? Yeah? Uh, so do your exercises. Uh, probably uh, make sure, I'm not saying lose weight, that's yeah. sort of up to you, but yeah. make sure you're not carrying around any extra weight, it'll end up in your chest. Right. And uh, consult a uh, plastic surgeon. Yep. We'll good. be back. Guests coming up. Yeah. Who do we got? Alana Eubank, Mark Valley, he's Keen Eddie, and Sharon and Ozzy coming up next week. Who's Alana Eubank? From uh, Legally Blonde 2. That's right. The friends. That's right. All right. So, that'll be tomorrow night. Drew's going to hop in his new car. <laughs> Look how so excited he is. I told you. Oh, my God. See that? So, until next time, Sam Crowley for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. Jokingly got me a pair of fuzzy handcuffs. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.